through this and send it to a few million people? Yeah. 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 I just, this is incredible. Look at this. Wow. All right. This is more incredible than our I'm already, but I'm doing this left handed. So. Oh, that's Holy great. Smokes. I wish I had. Yeah. Yeah. The same The same St. Mark's bookstore here, right? Yeah. This is an incredible uh, turnout. We hope for 50 people. <laughs> yeah. uh, you Twitter. So I know we just did this through Twitter and, and, a, little, and a little Facebook. And Amy Goodman. And oh yes, we yes, I was on Amy Goodman. All right, so I cheated. <laughs> I went on the great Amy Goodman. And um, I sent it to everybody who signed the petition already. Oh, you sent it to the 40,000? 40, 40,000 people signed 40, the petition. 40,000 have signed the petition. Woo! That's incredible. We need another 40,000. All right, now, and who are, we're appealing to Cooper Union owns this. This is right, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Don't appeal it. Yes, and, uh, and we're appealing politely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are the landlord. Um, and, uh, and we all love Cooper Union, right? I mean, yeah. yes. one of the yes. great things about New York City, right, for a hundred and umpteen years. And, um, They're fucking up the neighborhood. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Abraham Lincoln's famous uh, speech at, uh, at Cooper Union. And I'm sure he would approve of, of tearing down everything. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. <laughs> and um, but that's why we must appeal uh, to their conscience, right? Yes. And uh, to the integrity of their history, um, because uh, they exist only because the people of New York have supported Cooper Union for all of these decades, for all of these now centuries, and and without the people, there would be no Cooper Union. So, um, so we just are asking for a very simple quid pro quo here, exactly. um, uh, to just acknowledge uh, that uh, times have changed. These times had nothing to do with the good people here at this store. It had nothing to do with the good people who are standing in this store right now. Uh, there was a crash that occurred because some people got greedy. They weren't satisfied with just a billion or two. They wanted multiple billions and I don't need to go over the history of the last few years you already know it but in part some people just down the street uh, decided to set up a mortgage scam uh, where they would sell crazy mortgages uh, to people knowing that these people would probably have to default and then knowing that took bets out against the very mortgages that they just sold. They took bets on betting because they knew. They, what better way to bet knowing what the hand is that's going to be played? They knew that, the, that these defaults would occur and, and, they would then, and they would profit from the bet they placed against it. And AIG and the insurance companies who insured these bets we're, I mean, the, the, again, I don't need to right. do the, the simple math of this. You've read about it, you know about it. Mm. But now, here we are, three years later, suffering yeah. still as a result of it. In this, in this one instance here at St. Mark's, uh, they're asking us again to pay a price, to lose an independent bookstore mm. because they got greedy and they... It wasn't enough just to destroy the lives of millions of Americans whose homes have been foreclosed on, mm -hmm. who are now facing foreclosure, whose homes are underwater. It's not enough that they have constructed a system where over 50 million Americans have no health insurance, mm. where 44,000, according to the <laughs> congressional report, 44,000 Americans die each year for the sole reason that they didn't have health insurance. 44,000, that's 15 9-11s every year in America because we have constructed a system that removes 50 million people from the system and then, and, 
And then we complain about Canada and these other countries because people have to wait in line. Well, they don't really wait in line up there when they're really... Sometimes they have to wait in line for a knee replacement. Something that's not going to kill them. Sometimes they do have to wait in line because the Canadians have this crazy idea to let everybody in the line. And when you let... When, when you take 50 million people out of the line, your, time, your wait's going to get shorter. But it gets shorter on the backs of those who are the have-nots. Who, who really, who as a good American can feel good about that? If you're really somebody who says you love your country, how can you feel good about you get to step over on the back of somebody else so that you can get in there a little bit sooner to get what you need? That's not, we are not going to survive. We all know that if we, if we allow this to continue. So this kind of greed goes across the board, affects so many things, and it comes down to a simple bookstore here on the corner of 3rd Avenue and 9th Street in the East Village of New York City. And at some point, you just have to stop and stand up and say, no more. I've had enough. I've seen enough of New York destroyed. I've seen enough lives here destroyed. I am ashamed to live in a city where out of 8 million people, a million of them live in poverty. That is disgraceful. But the system is set up so that it doesn't matter how much shame we feel about it. Because the machine moves forward to make more money, to find new ways to scam the working people, to figure out how to get their pensions, to figure out how to steal more from them. And so, Everything, everybody's taken a hit, and bookstores have taken a hit. And this book, bookstore in particular can't pay the same rent it was paying three years ago. So all it's asking for is a decent reduction. It's not asking for a free lunch. Oh, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> it's just asking for some decency. That's it. Everybody's having to make less. I just I just read in the paper the other day, Will Ferrell has gone from $20 million a movie to $6 million a movie. I, I, that's not a knock on him. I love Will Ferrell. And we all need a good laugh in these times. Um, but um, I'm, I'm basically trying to make a what I think is a very obvious point, uh, which is that the Cooper Union has to understand We've been asked by their, the people who fund them, the people, the, the people, the largesse of this town that, that keeps certain institutions going. Um, they've, they've been asking everybody to do with less and to sacrifice. Well, it's time that they share the sacrifice too. That's all we're asking for. So, to whoever started the petition, Oh, she's right here. What is it? Francis? Yeah, Francis. There are two young women up here who are refusing to take credit. They are giving the credit to each other. Francis, and who is the other woman? Joyce. And, and Joyce. Of the Cooper Square Committee, which the, is really important. Of the Cooper Square we'd be, Committee. We beat Robert Moses. The Cooper Square Committee. For those of you who don't know your history, they beat Robert Moses. <laughs> and now we're going to beat if you don't know who Robert right. Moses is. That's really if you don't, yeah. yeah. If you don't know who Robert Moses is, you can Google it, and you can see that, that nobody beat Robert Moses. <laughs> Except us. Uh, Except us. We beat him. That's right. Now, St. Mark's Bookstore is also not asking for a handout. We're not asking uh, for people to write them a check or anything like that. They're just asking that we support our local independent bookstores, including and especially this one. Now, yes, you can buy these books cheaper online. Um, and I'm not opposed to that on some level, especially when it comes to realizing that so many working class people now have a difficult time and they've cut book buying out of their budget because they can't afford the cost of books. Uh, books cost too much to begin with, as far as I'm concerned, including mine. 
Uh, so uh, th this, this should have been stopped a while ago when it went past $19 on the, on the little, on the, on the inside flap. It never should have been a two in front of there. But, but uh, what has to, that, <laughs> what did that mother take the this kid This baby out? is this upset baby. at the cost yeah. of books. <laughs> she hasn't been able to even buy one yet. <laughs> Be able to. Um, <laughs> See, right, this <laughs> once acknowledged. Now, <laughs> quiet. Um, no, good parents read to their babies right from the beginning, right? Yeah, yes. And see, now this baby, first thing the baby's going to see is inside the flap. Twenty-seven dollars. Just you know, can't control, can't control stuff. Anyways, um, so people who are living on a very strict budget can go online and and afford some books, and so I'm glad they're able to do that. I think that's that's a, that's a good thing. Of course, we understand all the ironies of that because they get the poor and the working class to support a system that is essentially part of what is and will be their undoing. And that is not a new thing. History is filled with many examples uh, of that. Um, but, but for those who can afford uh, to do this, I encourage you to come back here to St. Mark's, to buy your books here. And not just, not just, because, not just to support St. Mark's or independent bookstores, but let's not lose sight of the fact of the human element of buying and reading books, yeah. yes. of coming yeah. into a bookstore, yeah. Yeah. of feeling the book, yeah. of looking at the book, turning the page, turning the page, a piece uh, of, of paper, a bookmark, of 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 smelling it, <laughs> underlining, right? and being around other human beings who are also readers, because reading. Um, as my parents taught me, my mom taught me to read and write uh, by the time I was four years old. So by the time I went to kindergarten, I was, she already had me reading books. It was the best and the worst thing uh, she could have done uh, for me. Uh, best for the obvious reasons, um, because any time you are presented with the tools where you can get information, you no longer have, you have one less person in society who has a chance to be ignorant. That ignorance is removed. Bookstores, libraries, they are on the front lines of fighting ignorance and stupidity Woo! in a society. Woo! Woo! We're those at the top. We're those at the top who've made our educational system their lowest priority. Yeah. Right. Two yeah. billion dollars yeah. a week on these wars. Two right. billion yeah. a yeah. week. Wow. And and our schools in the gutters. Mm -hmm. All right. That's where, now, why would they place the priorities there? Why would they want a system where we now, I just saw the statistic, where we have 40 million Americans, adults, right now, who are what are called functional illiterates. They cannot read and write above a fourth grade level. The system doesn't really need or want them to read above that level. As long as they can do the basics behind the counter at McDonald's or at the checkout line at Walmart, they have the basic math and the basic writing, reading and writing. Because after fourth grade, when you start to read things and you start to think and you, or you're exposed to ideas and you're taught maybe to think critically and to examine the issues, that's when it becomes dangerous for those in charge, right? Because you have, you have an educated society that know, I mean, how, how, what do you think the percentage are of Americans that know that we're spending two billion a week on these wars? And if they did know it, if they did understand the economics of this, they'd be pissed off. They would be pissed off. Mm -hmm. It would be really. So that's the job of people who write. That's the job of our journalists to get those facts and that information out there to a populace that those in charge are hoping remain quasi ignorant. Mm -hmm. Not too stupid so that they can't add up the Big Macs, which now they, all that they do is push a colored button on the register. <laughs> but stupid enough so that they'll fall for things like Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. Let's send our young people over there to be killed. All right? You see that? That doesn't happen in places that, are, that have highly educated people. And um, so our bookstores are on the front lines, and this store is. And, and coming into a bookstore, it's the same thing for, you know, I make my movies. 
I do not make them for you to see at home. I do not make them, I mean, I'm glad you do, glad you get it on Netflix, it's fine, but that's not why I make them. I'm not sitting in the editing room thinking of you watching this on an iPhone. I want you sitting in a theater with 200 other fellow Americans that you don't know, and I want you collectively to be experiencing in the dark what I'm putting out there to you. I want you to laugh together, I want you to cry together, I want you to get angry together, and I want you to march out of the theater saying, God damn it, this is not the America I'm going to live in.